you'll soon see pictures and you understand what we're talking about. That's all right there with our family members, everyone. So much love for Yosri Madini. They say, look, oh, what a story. Emotional uh, right there. Everyone's saying, look, look, you can be something with sports. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care what you think the future does not hold for you. But if you've got a talent that God has given to you, okay. walk on it. You never know. That's a Syrian refugee going to the Olympics. I want to read up something. I said it to the guys in the morning. I'll tell you tonight. The refugee team has already attracted widespread media attention and is expected to provide one of the few good stories of the 2016 Rio Olympics. With their participation alone being a far bigger achievement than any of Usain Bolt or Michael Phelps. What a story. That's the power of sports right there. It's not only a Madini. Look at athletes competing for the Refugee Olympic team. I've already started training in Kenya. They are already preparing refugees. Refugees. Sports has transformed their lives. Next month's Olympics in Rio, we mark the first time in history that an all-refugee team is competing at the Games. Well done, IOC. Composed of 10 athletes from the Middle East and North Africa, the refugee team is hoping to win medals at the world's biggest sporting events. That's the power of sports prepared. right there. Okay, let's listen to some of the athletes, no. and then we'll come back. We'll also listen to Madini and continue with the show. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. I'm very prepared. You know, if you go, you are good there. So you are going to meet with so many people. Not me alone. I'm good running. So you are going to meet with the world. My first time when I remember when I came here, I ran 400 meters for 85. So I have been reducing until at least now it has been reaching for 60 something. For me, I feel very excited because this one it is the first chance for the refugees to participate in the Olympics and to give us hope that for us maybe to encourage the young generation, our fellow refugees who are remaining in the camps, maybe to continue their, their talent because, you know, for us it just started just some few months ago. Yeah, so we cannot compare our, our time with those who are high level, but we wish we try our level best so that we just do well. Being a refugee is only a stator, you see. You can change that stator to be a, a better person in life. Most of them, they lose hope in life. Whereby when you call somebody a refugee, you feel ashamed. Even some of them, maybe, they don't have a ch ch chance to do everything as a human being can do. Like going to a school. Most of them, they are staying in camp because they lose hope in life. But as an ambassador for them, I can say that don't lose hope in life. You have a chance to change your life. So that's it, uh, Kenyan uh, refugee athletes getting ready for the 2016 Rio Olympics. And they're excited. We told you it's the first time in history that we'll be having an all-refugee team competing at the Games. That's for the Kenyan refugee. I want you to also listen to uh, Yuzri Medina. She didn't speak so much. That Syrian refugee lady, she's a swimmer. She'll be competing for Team Germany at the 2016 Rio Olympics. I love her story. You know why? Because it makes me feel the power of sports. And I'm sure you're also feeling it. Let's listen to Yuzri Medina when we come back we will go to at the cup of team australia kitty kitty machila is talking again we'll listen to her it's the first time that happened to me and it's my first olympic so i think it's gonna be an amazing experience for me oh my family is here and yeah uh, my dad is a swimming coach and all of them like always uh, are there for everything I do, for everything I am doing. I hope that the war will end and everyone will go back and all these things will stop. Is it a heartwarming? That's usually Medina there. She's just 18 years old. She's a swimmer and she'll be representing uh, Germany on a team of refugees and picked by the International Olympic Committee. What are they doing? The IOC, they're trying to encourage inclusion with sports. Everybody is one. Fair play is the game. So, good one coming from uh, the refugee team. We're expecting to see if they can win medals at the Olympics. That would be so much love right there. Let's go into the camp of Team uh, Australia. Kitty Chilla, she's been talking lately. Remember how she first said, ah, Brazil, they're not so ready. Uh, they, didn't like, they didn't like the rooms that they gave to uh, Team Australia at the Games. Now they're talking about Russia. Everyone is talking, uh, talking about Russia and these doping allegations and what Russia is going through at the moment. Let's listen to Kitty Chilla. It's all about the 2016 Rio Olympics. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Um, so that's 35 athletes, cheats. 
that have been banned in the last 24 hours since the IOC handed down their decision. So I think that is proof that the IOC decision was done to protect the clean athletes. And I think that's what perhaps some people forgot yesterday, that there's no presumption of innocence. All the Russian athletes are only provisionally entered, and it is up to those athletes to prove that they are clean. What we've seen today is that there's going to be a lot of athletes already, and a lot more, who will not be able to prove that they are clean, so they will not be here. The water's really clean. It's all filtered and pumped from its own sort of reservoir lake. Uh, so the, the, it's really clean. I actually haven't seen any mosquitoes. Um, we were in the village today and I saw a few things buzzing, but I, we didn't get too close. So um, I guess my view on the Zika is that we're aware of it and the AOC has taken those precautions and we, we sort of are following those closely and I guess that's all we can do at the moment is just make sure we're wearing insect repellent and, and not sort of going where the mosquitoes are. Okay, so that's it. Uh, Kitty Chilla uh, giving her views on Russia. You know the updates, yeah? All of, not all of the Russian athletes are banned, but the international federations, they are going into Russia and they're doing the field training processes. We told you this morning that 12 rowers have been banned from the Olympics. It's not just uh, the rowers, we also, uh, you know, that the entire athletics team, they are not going to uh, the 2016 Rio Olympics. So Russia going through the cleaning process. Let's see. Let's see if they can come out of it. It's the 2016 Rio Olympics, and whenever it's the Olympics, football suffers. You know why? Because some clubs don't release players. In Nigeria, for instance, they are not happy with Arsenal Football Club because they're holding on to Alexi Wobi. For Manchester City, they're holding on to Kelechi Iheanacho. FIFA president Gianni Infantino is trying to explain what they are doing to make sure that this club versus country realm ends. Let's listen to him. When we'll come back, we'll continue the show. Don't go anywhere. Stay.